Hello guys and welcome back again to the Babylonians crypto channel. Today we are going to talk about the Solana season and what Solana is. So the price of Solana has been forming this base around the $2 to $4 for the whole of 2020. And in 2021, suddenly the price skyrocket all the way up to about $42 right now. So what is this hype all about and why is everybody suddenly talking about Solana now? So this video will be a quick introduction to help you get to speed on what this project is all about and why you should pay attention to it. So let's get to it. Disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor and this video is just for educational purposes. So please do your own due diligence before putting your money into any investments. For a start, Solana, this name actually comes from the Solana Beach, which is a real beach located at the north of San Diego. And the team behind Solana is actually people coming from Apple, Qualcomm, Intel, Google, Microsoft, Twitter, and all these companies over here and the main guy here is Anatoly Yakovenko. Yakovenko he is the founder and CEO of Solana and he works at Qualcomm for over 10 years along with his colleagues uh, Stefan and Greg so these guys working together at Qualcomm they live and serve on Solana Beach for about three years and that's actually how this name came about so Qualcomm is the company that supplies chips to all our smartphones and you can see that their Snapdragon 888 is the second most powerful chip behind Apple's A14 Bionic chip. So these are all engineers of the brightest mind from uh, Qualcomm that comes together and build Solana. And if you think about the business of a chip processor, it is about maximizing speed, efficiency, and GPU optimization with as little space as possible in those microchips. And this is exactly the same as with blockchain. It is about maximizing the transactions per second. So if you think about what they do, it is not hard to imagine what they can build. So what is Solana? In short, Solana is just another blockchain platform, just like how you have Ethereum, you have Binance Chain, you have Cosmos, you have Zilliqa. So Solana is just one of them. But what is unique about Solana is that they are the fastest layer 1 blockchain in the world of crypto right now. They can scale up to 50,000 transactions per second. And you can see that their fees are almost negligible that you don't even have to think about paying gas fees. So why is speed and scalability so important? Because if you think about it, if crypto was to really take off, and you're going to expect billions of users using your dApps on all these platforms, then you need to have the infrastructure and the capacity to scale. And if your blockchain can't handle the load as all this uh, demand and volume starts piling up exponentially, then it will fail, right? And this is exactly the same problem with Ethereum right now. There's just too much demand on all these dApps and, and the whole platform is just so congested right now that it can't handle the load anymore. So this lead to the spike of gas price to the extent that you are paying 50, 100 USD just to send some tokens or swap some tokens. So small retail users, they are unable to participate on the Ethereum platform anymore because the whole network is too congested and Ethereum is unable to scale. And if you think about what Visa, Google, Nasdaq, the things in the traditional world, what is their transactions per second, you can see that Visa, they are doing about 65,000, Google is about 350,000, Nasdaq about 500,000. So if you really want to talk about crypto disrupting the real world, replacing and replicating all these functions of a traditional finance, then we need something powerful and that is where Solana comes in. So Solana can theoretically scale up to 710 transactions per second on a 1 GB network. And But right now they are doing about 50,000 transactions. So how is this possible? Solana prides itself on 8 core innovations, which is uh, proof of history. 
Tower BFT, Turbine, Gulf Stream, Sea Level, Pipeline, Cloud Brick, and Archivers. So these are really highly technical and abstract concepts that uh, I've tried uh, understanding them, but I just don't know what is going on. But if you're ambitious enough to try and understand, definitely do check out their white paper and do let me know your thoughts below in the comments. But the idea here is that they have made it such a way that scalability is not being constrained by the consensus mechanism, but by the hardware capacity. This means that it will scale based on Mohs law, which means that if the chips double in power and bandwidth GPU core becomes more powerful, so will Solana's transaction per second. And they are able to do it without sharding or layer 2. Now why is sharding or layer 2 bad? Because if you look at uh, sharding, Zilliqa is doing sharding right now, they are doing about 2500 transactions per second. But sharding this idea is not really ideal because you are breaking up the database into multiple shards and all these uh, nodes will process these transactions in parallel concurrently. And then afterwards, they have to come back together to piece all the information up together into one block. So this creates problems, right? Because now you require synchronous communication, meaning that it should be real time without delay and when transaction volume starts uh, picking up it could be really messy as for layer 2 the tricky part here is consensus because by building a layer 2 sidechain you are introducing a separate consensus mechanism different from that on layer 1 so think about it this way layer 2 is creating its own world and everything that is happening on layer 2 won't be updated on layer 1. So layer 1 doesn't know anything until the user on layer 2 exits and communicate to layer 1. So there's really no global consensus on the state of the network. And then you have other problems such as liquidity because now if you split up the network into L1 and L2 then your liquidity also gets halved, right? And this creates inefficient market. So again, L2 is uh, troublesome because now you have to convert everybody to go to L2 and then there are so many competitors which are all operating in silo. Then you have to start building bridges between, not just between L2 but also between L2 and L1. So ideally, the most efficient way of scaling is actually to build layer 1 right and do everything on the base layer. And again, Solana is the only one that is able to do it right now. They are able to scale up to 50,000 transactions per second. So Solana has the tech, has the platform, but no one is really paying attention throughout the whole of 2020 because uh, everyone in crypto just thinks that this is just another coin out there uh, claiming themselves to be the next big thing. And we often get sick and tired of hearing all these things. But people are starting slowly to realize that we had big projects are coming to Solana. Now something is going on here. So I've compiled all the major news that happened on Solana that lead to where it is today. So in 2020, this is the major news. Chainlink integrates with Solana. Chainlink is the, everybody knows Chainlink, right? They are the mother of all oracles. And them coming to Solana is a, is a good start. Then on April, Solana adds Terra stablecoin. They are partnering up with Terra to build some sort of a bridge to facilitate the transfer of Terra stablecoins between Solana and the Terra network. So this would be good for Terra's uh, Chai app because there are hundreds and millions of volume and payments going on every day on their app. Then on July, FTX and Alameda Research they created this uh, decentralized uh, DEX uh, Serum and they chose Solana over Ethereum. So Serum is this uh, on-chain order book and by the way, on-chain order book has never been done on blockchain in history. And why is that so? Because blockchains really they are too slow to handle the load, the volume of on-chain order books. And that's, and that's how automated market makers, AMM, came about, right? Because they have to come up with uh, alternative ways to create a market between buyers and sellers. But right now, Solana is so fast 
that you are able to do an on-chain order book on blockchain. So this is really a big thing in crypto because right now, if you think about it, those trade five people can just directly replicate what works on the traditional finance model, which mostly uses uh, on-chain order books and move them over to the decentralized platform like Solana. And I think this is kind of the deal breaker here, this news, because people follow them, right? The, the guy behind FTX and Alameda Research is Sam Bankman Fred, and he is a 28-year-old billionaire quant trader from MIT Physics who actually built uh, FTX and Alameda Research. So smart people listen to him. And the fact that he chose to build Serum on Solana over Ethereum or any of these uh, other chains or Binance chain or this speaks volume about this. And he actually wrote this uh, interesting article that I will highly encourage everybody to read. So Serum says that the potential of DeFi could reach 1 billion users and 10 trillion of on-chain value. But what is required to get there? So the blockchain needs to grow into 1 million transactions per second. It needs to have very low gas fees and it needs to scale with most law. So what blockchains exist today that could get there? None. And Solana is the only one. Because if you if you think about sharding, it, it's also not, not possible. So that's why so that's why Serum chooses uh Solana, right? Then on September, USDT announced that they are coming to Solana. Now this is another huge news because USDT they are the largest stablecoin market. And if you look at all the DeFi protocols right now, almost everybody uses USDT. Their market cap is what 54 billion. So think about all this money that is flowing into Solana. Then the next month, the competitor of USDT, USDC, uh, they are created by Circle, which is backed by Goldman Sachs and Coinbase. So USDC is the second largest stablecoin and they also announced that they are coming on Solana. And in the same month, Solana also uh, introduced that they are going to build a bridge called Wormhole. So Wormhole is this bridge that connects ERC20 tokens on Ethereum to SPL tokens, which is the, the token standard for Solana. And it is this interoperability bridge, right, to, to allow cross-chain of uh, assets from Ethereum to Solana. So this is another big thing to look out for. It is live right now, but I think people are still trying to build and integrate it right now. So this is really something to, to keep a lookout for because it is probably the game changer that is going to uh, take Solana to the next leg up. And finally on December, Solana Bridge said they are going to work with Arweave. And Arweave is a Coinbase venture project. So just think of them like Dropbox. They are a data storage uh, blockchain platform. And Solana, if you think about it, they, if they are doing 50,000 transactions, and their network is being utilized at full capacity, then the protocol will generate four petabytes of data. And all this data needs to be stored somewhere to free up the load of all these nodes, right? So that's why they, they are working with uh, Arweef together. So this is a brief overview of a timeline throughout 2020 of what happened in the Solana ecosystem. Now, what is next? What happens in 2021? In 2021, suddenly there's this explosion of projects all coming into Solana. And we are now seeing almost new projects every few weeks, especially with this uh, Solana hackathon that is going on from May 15 to June 7. So right now, you know, when you, if you go to Twitter, you're almost seeing every new, new projects, new tokens coming on Solana right now. And this is uh, what is also causing price to uh, start pumping uh, throughout 2021. So if you look at Solana, it is somewhat like the phase of Ethereum in 2017 where the platform is new and fresh and there's just so much developer interest to build. So I'm seeing a similar pattern in Solana here and if you go and compare the market cap of Solana, you can see that right now they are only about 11 billion. Now if you look at other blockchain platforms, Ethereum is almost 400 billion. Binance BSC is about 95 billion. 
and Cardano fifty billion. So if if Solana is really is going to take off, then we are seeing a five x ten x upside potential from here. And if you compare Solana to the other blockchains, they they are the only L one blockchain that has the fastest transactions per second that has the ability to scale they have the enterprise grid standard and the downside is they are pretty new and they have not been better tested yet right because now it's only a few months since the solana hype uh, starts getting on so once they find this sweet spot of product market fit it is the deal breaker for it and i think the only limitation that is stopping solana right now is just the innovations and ideas that is, uh, that is coming on board Solana. And this is being bootstrapped by the hackathon that is running right now, which sees thousands of developers uh, joining and building stuff on Solana right now. So we will keep a lookout for Solana. So there are a few particular gems that I'm looking at in the Solana ecosystem, uh, particularly is Serum and Radium. So Serum is built by SBF or Sam Bankman Fred. He is the guy behind the FTX. So Serum, they are this on-chain order book, as we have mentioned just now. And the unique selling point about them is they are the one that is powering all the other dApps on Solana. So a lot of all these dApps on Solana are actually just front-end trading interface. And most of them, on the back end, they are pulling data and volume and this matching order book mechanism from Serum. So Serum is the guy that is powering most of this front-end trading interface that is on Solana right now. And also, it is built by SBF, so don't bet against that guy. Second is Radium. Radium is sort of like the Uniswap of uh, Solana. They are an automated market maker, AMM, and you can do all sorts of uh, you can provide liquidity pool, you can do some farming over here and they also have fusion farms and these fusion farms actually you are able to earn tokens in both of these assets that you provided as LP. So I'll show you an example that I'm farming on Radium right now. So you can see that I'm doing uh, Ray plus Solana and I've earned about 43 USD and also Ray plus Serum. This is uh, the rewards that I'm earning and you can also stake your Radium directly over here. And the reason why I chose Radium and Serum also is because if you look at the total value lock in Solana DeFi, it's about 1 billion now and you can see that most of them comes from Radium and Serum. So right now they are the two market leaders in the DeFi space in Solana. So if you want to, if you are betting that Solana will become successful, they will become the, the, the DeFi platform standard for everybody in crypto, then Radium and Serum is the two dApps that you can start looking at. As for Serum, you can also stake your Serum on Stake Project Serum, but you need a minimum of uh, 500 SRM to be able to stake your Serum. Or either way, you can stake your serum on FTX. So if you come over here, you go to stake, then you select SRM. You can stake your SRM for about 4% staking rewards per year. And then the unstaking take about 7 days. So FTX is the exchange that supports most of Solana tokens. So if you want to, if you are interested in buying and betting in all these uh, Solana projects, uh, FTX is the one to go for because you you you, are, you won't be able to find these tokens on Binance because they are they are on Solana ecosystem right so they are using a completely different token standard and that's why uh, most of them are on FTX so what about Solana Solana you can also stake them and earn some uh, use you can do it on FTX FTX they are paying about 10% annualized staking rewards and it takes seven days to unlock Another way that you can stake your Solana tokens is on Binance. So if you go to Binance Earn and you click on Lock Staking over here, View More, you can actually stake a lot of these tokens uh, on Binance. So let's say if I want to stake Solana, I can choose 30 days, 60 days or 90 days. But there is a uh, limited slots available so you can see that they are all being locked, uh, sold out now. 
and the only available option is this uh, 30 days for 10% yield. And the last way to do that, which is what I'm doing right now, is to stick on SoulFlare. So this brings me to the next point, which is the wallets to store your Solana tokens. So there are right now a couple of few wallets uh, to store your Solana tokens. The most famous one is Solat. Solat is again built by uh, Serum. And if you look at the... But I don't really like Solat because if you look at their interface, it's really plain and basic right and i think it's because it's built by the quants right these quants they focus on the back end they don't really bother so much about the front end so if you look at the front end it usually looks very clunky and basic and even on serum you can see that this is how the front end looks like but i think it's fine if you just want to store some of your solana tokens an alternative one which i'm currently using and i feel this is uh, better is uh, soul flare so you can create a wallet here. If you are, if you have a ledger, you can also create a wallet, and that is how I created a wallet here. And on Soulflare, you can directly stick your Solana tokens also, and the yield is also about 10, 10 to 12 percent. Just that the difference right now is you are staking directly with uh, one of the validators on Solana ecosystem. And finally, the last wallet that I would recommend is uh, Phantom. So Phantom is this extension over here. They are now in beta phase, I think. But in terms of UI design, I think they are the best. Uh, or they are comparable with Soulflare as compared to this uh, Solet. So you can explore some of the wallets over here. So personally, I'm using Soulflare. But I think Phantom and Soulflare is a pretty good choice if you want to store your Solana tokens. And finally, the last point I want to talk about is actually how to transfer money into FTX. So FTX is just another exchange, right? Just like Binance exchange. The only difference is this is built by traders, it's built by SBF, and their interface is also pretty slick. And if you want to buy uh, tokens, Solana tokens on FTX, you have to deposit your USDT, right? So if you go to your wallet, once you create your account, you go to your wallet, click on deposit USD. So there are a couple of options here. If you have BUSD from Binance, you can straight away deposit over here. Just use your uh, deposit address here and copy your memo. So there is one way of depositing USD into FTX. The second way is if you have USDT, then come over to over here, deposit USDT and click on the Tron network because this is the cheapest network. I think it costs only about $1 to transfer your, your USDT uh, across from Binance to FTX. If you do it through Ethereum, either ERC20, it, it will cost like $20, $30. So once you have deposited your USD, you can just buy any of the Solana tokens that is listed on FTX. And that's it for this video. I hope it gives you a good overview understanding of what Solana project is all about and what are the upside potential for them. So if you like this video, do remember to like, share, subscribe and see you in the next video.